She started out on a career path headed toward becoming a CPA. Only a car accident deterred her plans. Only that detour eventually led her to her seat at the helm of one of the state's two major universities. We're sitting down across the table from University of South Dakota President Sheila Jestering today to find out why you might just run into her at the Zestro Impier. question I have to ask is what are you drinking in your cup? Just plain house coffee medium roast. Okay, so do you normally just drink plain coffee? Uh, usually. Sometimes in the afternoon I'll grab a mocha or very rarely an iced coffee but usually yeah. just plain coffee, no cream, no sugar. Mm, I like it. So let's get to know a little bit more about you. Sure. Now, for where you are today, women in leadership, it's been a big topic. Why are you so passionate about that? You know, in some respects, I feel like I owe the generation that went before me. There were many stories many times about women who were incredibly successful and there were barriers put up and they fought very, very hard to remove those barriers. And so I feel the least I can do is continue to make sure that those barriers never go up again. So what led you to your career? How did you get to where you are? Well, it's kind of interesting at times. I was attending the University of Sioux Falls. It was my senior year, and I was on the way to the library. And I ended up in a pretty significant car accident, totaled my car. All the time I had planned on going to a CPA firm, I was going to be a partner at a CPA firm. That was the plan. Nothing was going to change that until that car crash. What and, happened? Um, just lost my car. I was fine. Um, I think I wasn't paying attention and actually ran the stoplight, to be perfectly honest. Um, but then I had to take the first job I was offered, and that job was in Pierce, South Dakota, in state government. Uh, started at the health department and worked my way through various elements in state government, went to transportation, human services, ended up at the Board of Regents office there for a while in ed higher education then about that 10th year. and. Uh, my husband and I uh, ended up getting married and we had always vacationed out in uh, Kalispell, Montana. Okay. They have beautiful golf courses and at the time we really liked to golf so we just decided why don't we move out here. Well we move out to Kalispell and we had two boys who then never saw their grandparents. So you moved back. So I got a call from a colleague at uh, the University of South Dakota one day and we came back and we've been here ever since. So, so Yote, are you a big Yote fan? Absolutely, <laughs> yes. Our whole family, go Yotes. I feel like if you live in Vermilion and you are at USD, you have to be a Yote fan. Like, there's no question. That's right. <laughs> and the community there is yeah. just absolutely supportive. It's right. fabulous. It's, it's fun, the energy. And it was demonstrated when we uh, had the at-large bid announcement for the yeah. women's basketball team this year. It felt like the whole town showed up to yeah. celebrate. So. That's amazing. So you mentioned that you like to golf. Yes. What other hobbies do you like to do? Well, I used to golf and fish a lot until we had our two boys. And now our hobbies involve um, running to gyms in the summer for basketball and in the winter for basketball and in the fall we're at football fields. And so I think our hobbies have shifted to chasing being our children. <laughs> yes, and being a taxi. Yes. Kind of seems like that is how it plays out after you have kids. Yes. But I'm sure you love watching them. Oh, I have every minute. And every how old minute. are they? 16 and 14. 16 and 14. And their names? Dylan is the oldest Kay. and Wyatt is the youngest. Okay. So Dylan, driver's license. Are yes. you not a taxi anymore? Not as much, yeah. no. No. <laughs> if we're going to Omaha or Minneapolis, I yeah. still get to taxi, but yeah. uh, not locally anymore. I love that. Yeah. So if you didn't have to be running your kids around, let's say you didn't have any obligations for work, what does the perfect day look like for you? You know, I think back to all the days where at the end of the day, I just sat back and thought, wow, that was a good day. And it always involved sunshine and my family always mm -hmm. so we went to Orlando um, had a fabulous time when the boys were younger that one sticks out in my mind but every good really perfect day that I can think of involved family and sunshine what do you do for a stress relief talk I usually just go home and talk to my husband and my children about something else yeah get your mind off it yes. yeah what would you say is one of your guilty pleasures 
uh, Zesto's Ice Cream in Pierce, South Dakota. Ice cream! Yes. I love ice cream. It's it my is, favorite food. It is the best <laughs> soft serve ice cream in the world. Well, I've never had it, and I'm the biggest ice cream fan, so now you have I'm going to have to go try. Yep, yes. I'm going to have to add it to my list. Yes. So let's talk a little bit about um, music. Yeah. What type of music do you like to listen to? Everything. It depends on the day. Um, today was a little Imagine Dragons. Yesterday was Dan and Shay, maybe. Yeah. Some days it's Florida Georgia Line. Some days it's ZZ Top. Yeah. So I really just like a huge variety. And of course, when I'm taxiing the children, it ends up being something like Drake or Cardi B or something. <laughs> Do they get to play DJ? <laughs> yes. Do they get to control it? <laughs> yes. So let's talk a little bit about just living in this community in Kelloland. What makes your life different? What do you love most about that? I think the people. Um, you know, I've not known much other than the Kelloland area, other than mm -hmm. those few years. Born out and in raised in South Dakota. Yes, born and raised in South Dakota, Springfield, South Dakota, small town, just on a, a farm. couple hours from here on a on a farm. Yes, yeah. Um, so I've not known a lot more, but I do know um, the people in this area are just fabulous. Uh, people look up and say hello when you walk by them on the sidewalk. Um, if you drop your phone, they'll pick it up for you. Um, just genuinely good people in this area. Mm -hmm. Caring people. Very, very much. Yeah. What is one thing that people in Kelloland don't know about you? When I was younger, I was very into horses. And I showed horses pretty much all summer, every summer. And 4-H and other areas, so very few people probably know that outside of Springfield. So outside of showing horses, did you go horseback riding, or All what was that like? All the time. I had two horses, and I'd wanted one since I could remember, and finally at nine years old, my father caved and bought me that horse, and I think I was riding horse every day, hours of a day, and sometimes if I didn't feel like riding, I'd just go out there and lay on her back, and she'd walk mm. around and graze, and I just lay there, so I used to what be really name? into horses. Ginger. Ginger, oh my gosh. That just sounds like the life. It was. Oh, it was great. I love it. Well, thank you so much, Sheila, for joining me here today and letting us get to know you. Yeah, thank you. Who would you like us to sit down with? What questions would you like us to ask? Go ahead and send us an email to kellolandliving at kelloland.com or message us through Facebook or Twitter. You can even give us a call with your suggestions at 605-336-336. 1100. Be sure and tune in next week to see who we'll be sitting down with next.